you start sir okay okay dear students i hope you are all well now we are now slowly reaching to our final destination now we are in module 28 as i was repeatedly telling you we would like to cover almost most of the surgical topics by 30 modules so we were able to achieve now with the module 28 the last module that is the bleeding per rectum and painful bottom that is files fisher fistula and you know and several other cases we are going to discuss as a final chapter and what's going to happen on module 29 and 30 you may be wondering those two modules are essentially something like a self assessment for all of you so once you complete this module we'll be sending you a list of the modules link from module 1 to 28 at various times so that if you are able to recollect all those points we discussed in the last 5 or 6 months then come back not this this sunday we are having this module 28 the following th sunday and the next sunday two sundays live at 11 am we'll be giving you 50 question mcq on week 29 then week 30 so those two will tell you exactly where you stand see for example if you are able to score 30 out of 50 that means you can be confident that you have done a reasonable i mean preparation for the examination if your mark score is less than 20 i would strongly recommend you to go through the modules one after other as and when it is possible for you okay so with that little introduction let me take you into this very important chapter as far as the, your practice is concerned there are various reasons why you can get a painful bump like this here a person injured by a bull but this is only a rare condition as far as you are concerned there are at least 10 different reasons why a patient will come to us with a pain in the perianal region okay before we go in just let us relax and see how much intimidation is done by this bull so here there is only one clear winner as you can see and you are all pushed to the corner like this and a bull gore injury as you can see is so common not only in spain like here but also in our country at times so let us come back to the serious business now pain in the butt the real reason as a doctor we will be seeing in the surgical department are as follows starting from the commonest cause for pain during defecation like fissure in ano then perianal hematoma strangulated piles perianal abscess proctitis anorectal malignancy pilonidal sepsis periurethral abscess hydradenitis suppurativa in the groin and perianal region and finally a functional anal pain that is proctalgia fuga so these are the 10 cases we'll be discussing and i just trying to correlate this to make it interesting i am bringing in 10 of our patients from department of gastroenterology with the various problems like this lady as you can see she was giving a very classical history doctor every time i go to the toilet to pass motion before motion comes tear comes in my eyes because of the so much of pain as if i am passing a razor blade or some burning sensation like a chili powder in my anal region so severe burning or sharp pain immediately after the act of defecation lasting for few minutes to few hours so that next day you are afraid to go to the toilet because you don't want to experience the pain anymore so because of that you have increasing constipation only to make the symptom much worse the following day so this is a very typical what we call suffering in silence in the toilet this is what happens in a very common in probably very important age group okay so when you see that patient with a history 
painful defecation tell me the commonest cause you tell them fissure in the anal region that is nothing but a small split or a tear in the anal margin like this this is the annals where you see a small tear it's like as if you are having a small ulcer in the lip every time you open the mouth it hurts you similar way every time when the motion comes it hurts severely because of the involuntary spasm of the internal sphincter and imagine the patient is in a lithotomy position and in that case this is the 12 o'clock 6 o'clock the two classical position of anterior and a posterior fissure in ano here it is a 6 o'clock that is a posterior fissure in ano this can be diagnosed simply by asking the patient to be in the left lateral position with the buttocks separated with a good elimination all you need you need not even put the finger inside the rectum because normally an examination of the perianal region has three important aspects one inspection of the anal region in a good light then with a jelly like xylequin jelly you gently perform a rectal examination and finally you try to see inside the rectum and anal canal by a proctoscopy so these are the things when it's required you can go again for a further investigation to look at the rest of the large intestine by colonoscopy so, so this is the lower gi tract investigation but here in fissure it is so painful we need to be kind towards our patient so we should not even do a rectal examination because it is a tight anal canal because of the sphincter spasm internal sphincter spasm we can't go and put your finger inside patient will say severe hurts it will jump to the roof so don't do even a rectal examination that is the rule proctoscopy is contraindicated in fissure in ano especially acute fissure there is a chronic fissure that is fissure there for many months it will give a classical three findings called fissure triad what do you mean by fissure triad you will have a, a chronic fissure here like any chronic ulcer a small boat shaped ulcer at 6 o'clock with the anal canal closed very tight that is sphincter spasm and then in addition there will be some hypertrophic anal skin like an external pile that is called a sentinel pile with or without an associated fistula in ano so this is a classical three findings whenever we have a fissure especially when they are in a typical position what do you mean by a typical position fissure here fissure there are common but if you have at 3 o'clock 9 o'clock or multiple fissure you suspect other conditions namely crohn's disease tuberculosis anal carcinoma or sexually transmitted diseases like hiv so these are the conditions you suspect whenever you have an atypical fissure or fissure in a multiple location okay coming to the treatment so the history and then a good elimination and examination of the exterior of the renal anal region that will confirm the diagnosis the treatment is very simple you advise a patient go for a non spicy high fiber diet avoid all non vegetarian take plenty of fiber plenty of fluid that's the advice and physical activities in addition there are some non surgical treatment nowadays what we normally use is called 2% gtn glycerol trinitrate or more commonly nowadays diltezim okay calcium channel blocker which is normally used for angina this applicable okay you can take a small amount in your index finger gloved index finger okay apply it in the perianal region and a few minutes after that you have a relaxation of the sphincter because of the release of the nitric oxide okay so that is what happens mechanism of action so this is the first important treatment we offer if this is not helpful or effective we could consider botulinum toxin which is another important muscle relaxant botulinum has been used immensely in various situations and one of the indication here is a fissure in ano so you can inject into the internal sphincter a small quantity of the botulinum toxin which will be effective for few months but 
more lasting or more definitive treatment is by what we call a lateral sphincterotomy. What do you mean by lateral sphincterotomy? Before do that, I'll tell you, we used to do a procedure called anal dilatation. What do you mean by anal dilatation? Patient under spinal, that is a regional or general anesthesia in a lithotomy position, with a lubricated finger, you insert one finger into the rectum, another finger, and gently dilate. If necessary, you can put two finger dilatation. So control, slow, steady dilatation initially with the one finger, two finger, two double finger, lateral stretch. If you do, that stretches the internal sphincter, but it risks small amount of post dilatation incontinence, especially to the platus. That's why nowadays, anal dilatation is not recommended. The recommended procedure is lateral sphincterotomy. What do you mean by lateral sphincterotomy? Patient anesthesia with a self-retaining proctoscopy, you just stretch the anal region, expose the one circumference, one third of the anal canal like this, either nine o'clock as shown here, or sometimes three o'clock, then you can divide the internal sphincter, division of internal sphincter, by an open incision or by a fine knife by a closed technique. You can divide. This is what is given here, the striped thing, red color. This is the internal sphincter. This is the external sphincter. You submucosally, the internal sphincter is there, which is in a severe spasm. You just divide with this knife. So immediately the patient will have a, a good relief. So the pain relief is by either ointment, which causes internal sphincter dilatation or relaxation, or by the sphincterotomy. The simpler treatment we sometimes offer is sits bath. What is sits bath? Like this lady was squatting in a warm water with a savalon, which is an antiseptic. So the warmth of the water relaxes the muscle. That's you can take it several times a day. Okay, so that's about the first condition. What is the next one you need to consider? Perianal hematoma. What is perianal hematoma? Sometimes when people, especially this man, lorry driver, they get constipated because of a sedentary lifestyle, driving for long distance. They, when they strain during defecation, one of the external anal vein ruptures. So because of that, there is a perianal hematoma, small blood clot right in the anal wedge. This blood clot causes as internal sphincter spasm, like fissure causing, here also a hematoma causing a spasm. So the same finding. Here, inspection, you will see the bluish discoloration of a small grape-sized mass anywhere in the circumference. It need not be at 6 or 12 o'clock position. It could be anywhere, usually about the size of a centimeter, like a grape size. And the rectal examination is painful. Proctoscopy, if it is possible, you do to exclude any internal hemorrhoids. Otherwise, don't submit the patient into agony. So once you have done that, the treatment is symptomatic, like what we did for Fisher in Anno, like Sitz bath, diltigism ointment. If they are not helpful, here you can do what we call uh, excision of the hematoma, like that. Under local anesthesia, you can deroof. Source, okay, dear roof the hematoma, you can remove the blood clot very easily. This is the diagrammatic representation of how a blood clot will look like. You can just de roof, remove all the blood clots. But normally, we say there is no need for this surgery because it is a five day painful condition. If you ask the patient to bear with the pain by giving him adequate analgesia and allowing him or encouraging him to take high fiber diet, less spicy diet, and take frequent sits bath, it is seldom necessary surgery. We do surgery like this, excision of the hematoma, only in 10% of the people. Coming to the third condition, more important for you as a short note sometime, is a pile mass, a bleeding piles, strangulated piles, or prolapsed pile mass. You may wonder what is piles? Piles are nothing but congested anal cushions. 
So if you go back and read the anatomy of the anal canal, you have the three anal cushions, three, seven, and eleven o'clock. Those are nothing but the columns, the mucosal columns of the veins. If they are getting congested under their descent, okay, they are to start with they'll be above the pectinate line, but as they become congested, swollen, they start descending below the pectinate line. Sometimes even pops out outside the anal region and the bleeds. Okay, the bleeding is so dramatic. That is what the patient says, sir. Yesterday, this young man said, yesterday I went to the toilet. I had some mutton and chicken for the last five days. I was struggling to straining to defecate because constipation is a price to pay when you are on non wage for days together. So when I was straining, when the motion came initially, followed by like a tap, watch me, like a tap, blood, fresh blood was dripping in the toilet. That is what very important. Especially in Western countries, they say drip in the pan because they in a commode, they sit. They see it only at the end or they see it in the tissue paper when they clean the bottom. But our people, they sometimes even faint at the sight of the bleeding because it's so fresh. It is sometimes dripping like as if you're opening a tap. Okay. And sometimes it will be 10 ml, sometimes even 100 ml we have seen. So it is like that because it is below the, the internal sphincter spasm. So it is squeezing it like a squeezing. So it is just like a jet, it bleeds. If the patient goes, lies down, sometimes it comes away. Otherwise, sometimes they faint in the toilet also because you can see the bleeding side. This is a prolapsed congested piles outside the anal region. So bleeding, very dramatic. Sometimes the whole pile mass looks prolapsed very painful throbbing especially when they are in advanced stage like this so what do you do you do inspect there are prolapsed pile moss at 3 7 11 o'clock with additional secondary piles also so you can say it is a circumferential pile mass it looks as if one of the differential diagnosis for piles of course is a prolapsed rectum complete prolapsed rectum but here because of this beaded appearance, okay, it has a classical feature unlike where the complete rectal prolapse, where you can see horizontal mucosal folds, typically the whole rectal mucosa. Here it is a congested emeraldal column or anal cushions only will be seen. This is an extreme case of prolapse strangulated piles. Rectal examination, you put some xylocaine jelly 2%, push the whole pile mass, then gently feel for any associated rectal condition like a cancer. So rectal examination is not to confirm piles. It is only to exclude cancer, which is much more serious condition. Whereas proctoscopy is an investigation of choice. All patients with the piles, once you push the pile mass, you put the proctoscopy, okay, which is about a 10 centimeter length inside a lubricated proctoscopy with a good illumination with a torch or self illuminating proctoscopy. As you withdraw the scope, you see bulging, prolapsing pile masses classically appearing as a purplish blue columns at 3, 7, and 11 o'clock. In some patients, especially elderly people, to find out whether they have any associated lesion we may ask them to undergo colonoscopy. Why the piles are at this classical position? Because uh, they usually, the veins are always fronts with the arteries, the arteries in the rectum and anal region. They are like this, three, seven, and 11 o'clock. Because two arterial branches and one, I mean, they are on the right side and one on the left side. So one single left branch and the two anterior posterior right branch Along with that, there is veins are also there. So that's why you always see these anal cushions at this classical position. This number is very, very important. Another thing important for you, but more important for postgraduate is to understand how to grade piles. Because grading is very, very important because that gives an idea of what treatment patient might require. Piles graded from grade one to grade four. For grade one is a hidden or a inside piles. They are inside the anal canal. They reveal only as a bleeding per rectum. You don't see anything. Only proctoscopy will show you the piles. 
otherwise it is concealed inside the anal canal two it comes out during defecation but as soon as patient gets up it goes in automatically in other words comes out and goes on its own that is second degree third degree comes out but it needs your assistance you have to push it back when you are washing your bottom it then only you can push so manual reduction is required that is grade three four it is there outside all the time whether you push it or not doesn't want to go want to be outside the anal canal this is the extreme case okay so as i mentioned colonoscopy is advisable especially if the patient has a in addition to rectal bleeding if they have something like an altered bowel habits like constipation or the bleeding is not fresh red piles always you have a fresh red blood if it is a dark blood think of some other cause for bleeding per rectum like a cecal carcinoma or more proximal conditions and elderly people or if you suspect malignancy always you do a bowel preparation with the patient in the left lateral position you perform a video colonoscopy look at the whole large intestine right up to cecum okay why is why we operate not only they bleed sometimes they come out like this they strangulate it's like a strangulated inguinal hernia they get strangulated because they are outside the it's a spastic muscle and the vessels get thrombosed then they become ulcerated the whole area becomes bluish like a gangrene then it goes for infection and the piles when it heals it heals with the fibrosis so anal stenosis sometimes with ulceration with the perianal region being with the feces it is a septic region so it gets infected so the infection may spread causing bacteremia sometimes the infection can go right into the liver because of the infection from here can travel along the superior rectal vein into the inferior mesenteric artery to the portal system so they call it pilifilibitis portal pyemia very serious condition can a piles kill a patient if somebody asks you yes if the strangulated ulcerated infected piles causes bacteremia gram negative septicemia portal pyemia one could die or piles with infection causes pyoderma there is infect necrotizing fasciitis around so that also can cause some damage so don't take piles lightly when the patient comes you treat them aggressively either medically or surgically how and what treatment do we have as i said in fisher diet is everything high fiber high fluid intake physical activities avoid sedentary lifestyle drugs do help but they don't have a lasting effect let me come to the drugs and other treatment because these are available not only in our allopathy also in ayurvedic also various uh, drugs are available but basically we have to tell the patient to regularly take what we call a sits bath warm bath so they relaxes the muscle there and take some laxative usually we have some laxatives which are not stimulant laxative bulk laxatives are very very good fiber okay so for that you can also encourage the people to take green leafy vegetables and fruits what about the ointments yes we do have various ointments like a soothing agents but it varies from person to person one of the common ointments like proctoxidil or anavet okay those these are the sealed ointment so these are all the three different ointments we normally use but make sure they don't cause any dermatitis in the region okay and what about any drugs which can decrease a congested anal cushion yes phlebotropic drugs are available like daflon commercially available consisting of diosmin and herbidirin so this can be used and most of the time we find some shrinkage and some pain reduction some de decrease in the incidence of bleeding in people taking this uh, daflon but it is at the best treat have a short term effect i would say so we are always, always recommend the patient if they continue to bleed to go for what we call instrumental treatment what instrumental treatment non surgical just to do a proctoscopic examination we can inject 
with a what we call a phenol in almond oil injection okay so when it it causes a phlebitis then it goes for a disappearance of the pain very simple but how the injection is not painful if somebody asks because the injection is given above the dentate line the dent above the dentate line the mucosa is painless okay what about the banding banding is nothing but application of a rubber band above the dentate line eh, by using a suction apparatus or by pulling and uh, deploying this bands like this this is a special gun available parents band b a r o n okay sometimes they say laser it is not laser we give irc infrared coagulation with thermal energy it can cause destruction of the pile mass bipolar cryotherapy there are various therapies are there the humpty number because piles is so common and there are so many people surgeons and also non surgeons are there but the commonest treatment we do in our country are either banding or irc that is infrared coagulation the treatment whichever five technique you use they are comparable but short term but what i would advise for you as a undergraduate should know is when the patient have the grade 3 grade 4 piles or symptomatic piles which persist in spite of the medical treatment or instrumental therapy we advise them to undergo either excision of the piles that is called open hemorrhoidectomy or hemorrhoidopexy that is called a step to hemorrhoidectomy what is the difference the open hemorrhoidectomy is nothing but excision of the anal cushions like this okay like a clover at the end of the operation when the trouble is over when the bottom looks like a clover like this okay but the problem as you can see is having a sore bottom it takes at least 3 to 4 weeks for the wound to heal till the time it will be painful and difficult to maintain cleanliness so he has to have frequent six bath off from the work for at least 4 weeks so that's not very i mean attractive to our common people so what we nowadays do is a staple hemorrhoidectomy which is like a take case procedure without this clover like perianal wound so patients prefer nowadays okay you watch here here we are doing a, a conventional open hemorrhoidectomy otherwise called milligan and morgan's hemorrhoidectomy either you can use a knife scissor diatomy hormanic any energy sources we nowadays normally use what we call diatomy so we apply the artery forceps and alis forceps at the classical pile mass situations here it is 4 7 and 11 and by doing as we like incision skin along with the hemorrhoidal mass is removed so with the diatomy as you can see you can remove the small amount of skin bridge allowing the pile pile mass but at the same time careful not to include in your pile mass excision the internal sphincter so internal sphincter has to be identified like here see this is the internal sphincter surgeon is identifying pushing it aside and he is just dissecting the pile mass this is the pile mass as you can see let me show you yeah here skin pile mass and this is internal sphincter so he will just put a stitch here and then excise this area okay let us just watch closely for next few minutes see what happens because i want you to see sometimes you may not be having the opportunity to visit the theater this is called a transfixation suture using either a vicryl i told you the last class what is the color code for vicryl for the when you see the cover of the vicryl suture material any bright student watching this if you say it is a purple good that is the right answer if i say it is a chromic catgut what is the color code for the cover of the chromic catgut suture pack anybody it is a dark brown color okay so these are the things you should know in addition to the surgery so now we are using here in this case a chromic catgut as you can see 
I'm just excised ligate and one. I'm going to excise that pile mass. Like that, I'll excise the rest of the pile mass. Now it is looking like a clava. So, and put a pack like this. So, as you can imagine, it is sore bottom. It is not a painless procedure. So, patients have a lot of pain. Sits bath, analgesia. Carefully, you clean and keep it clean for next three, four weeks. So, it is cumbersome. So, what we nowadays do is a hemorrhoidopexy or a staple hemorrhoidectomy, wherein you see here, this is a pile mass, which is nothing but congested, displaced, or outside the anal push, it's coming. And for this, we have a special anal speculum, and then you have various steps and a special gun in order to do the procedure. At the end of the day, this is the beginning before the operation, this is at the end of the operation, you can see the whole thing is like pulling your sleeve. The hemorrhoid anal cushion is pulled up, decongested. So it is not actually you are removing, but you are removing the rectal mucosa few centimeters above the pectinate line, which is a painless area. And by doing so, you are devascularizing the anal cushion. So anal cushion sinks back to the normal size and the patient will not have any more prolapse. Because it is done 360 degree, it is totally, completely, it takes care of the, both the primary and secondary piles. Okay. You see here, patient is in a lithotomy position. And you do this examination. But mild anal dilatation like this. Okay. Then what we do, you put a speculum like this. A self-retaining operating anal speculum. This is called. Okay. Then we do what we call bursting suture. We make a bursting suture two to three centimeter above the pectinate line. Okay. So once once you have done that. For string sutures like this, like this, you watch here. Okay. Then we apply the gun. See, this is the gun. Okay. This is what we call a circular stapler. So that the anvil goes inside the rectum and the other part is outside the first string. When you close, this part of the rectum, about 2 cm, is resected circumferentially. Okay? You watch. Then, by... You are now just closing so that you are approximating this and this here by rotating here. So that they come closer like this. It looks like an AK-47. Now you take the remove the anal speculum. Then very important step, of course, is sque squeezing this handle, okay? And once you've done that, and then you take it out, and now you can see the pile mass, okay? You can see the pile, okay? This is a 360 degree excision of there. You can see up to three to four centimeter. And then you do a check proctoscopy to ensure there is no undue bleeding. And so you can see there is no external wound at all, as you can see. Very simple procedure. So coming to the next important thing, of course, is a very painful another condition, perianal abscess, which if it is not treated properly, it may lead on to a chronic condition that is a fistula in an. Okay. 
what actually is a perianal abscess or perianal sepsis you have what we call a cryptoglandular apparatus in the intersphincteric plane this is the anacanal coronal section as you can see the rectal mucosa internal sphincter parts of the external sphincter intersphincteric plane where the cryptoglandular apparatus if it gets infected pus from here can track anywhere okay it can come down and present here it can go present as a submucosal abscess perianal abscess ischiorectal abscess or even it can ascend up okay so patient will comes with the severe pain in the perianal region with the induration redness like this when you see that i told you the various locations of the abscess the commonest abscess location is in the perianal region okay somewhere here the next is common is a inter ischiorectal abscess just here sometimes ischiorectal abscess may be secondary to some injection in the region gluteal region injection injection abscess okay and the supra levator abscess or pelvic abscess usually because of the intra abdominal conditions more commonly like appendicitis pelvic appendicitis presenting with the supra levator abscess but the commonest presentation is perianal sepsis as you can see so how do you see that then you treat them either empirically or do an incision and drainage but later they can present with a condition called fistula in ano what is a fistula you all know fistula is nothing but a communicating tract between two epithelial lined surfaces okay from the skin here to the anal or rectal mucosa usually external opening internal opening this is a fistula tract depending upon how long the tract is whether it is below the sphincters there is a low anal fistula or going right above the sphincter there is high anal fistula 95% of the fistula in ano are low anal fistula which can be easily tackled at our level high anal fistula needs expertise so when you examine like every examination you inspect look for the fistula external opening do a rectal examination and feel for the internal opening usually internal opening will be felt along the dentate line usually at 6 or 12 o'clock question that proctoscopy colonoscopy is important especially if patient has a multiple fistula in ano in a case of crohn's disease but in addition to all this we have to consider at least one of these two common investigation nowadays done for fistula in ano they are either endorectal ultrasound or mri of the rectum because fistula as far as the part is class kind of classified it into four broad categories one of course is the commonest one that is intersphincteric internal opening external opening the tract comes in between the two muscles so intersphincteric so the external opening if you carefully see is within a centimeter from the anal margin that is the commonest and this is the easiest one to treat next of course is from the internal opening the tract goes right through the both the muscle both internal muscle sphincter part of the external sphincter come and open at least 2 to 3 cm away from the anal margin that is called a transphincteric depending upon the location of the external opening we can guess where they likely would have been internal opening and also what is the course of this tract that is called good salts rule good salts rule better you go and read yourself next of course is a supra sphincteric that is this one goes through the levator extra sphincteric which completely bypasses the two sphincters okay as i said if you do an endo ultrasound or mri you will have a beautiful picture but this is above your syllabus as a undergraduate but you should know whenever i have a fistula in ano nowadays we don't operate unless patient has ultrasound of the anal region or mri depending upon the expertise available in our region coming to the treatment what and how we do the simplest treatment is lay open the fistula you just to open like a book so you identify the external opening you put some hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide bubble 
will go and it will come out, bubble out. So you will be able to identify exactly where it opens inside the internal opening. So you pass a probe from the external through the internal opening like this and open the whole track by just slitting the skin. That is called a lay open. Okay. So that is a twist to lotomy. You can do that. Or else we can do, you can ligate. If it is going through a muscle, you don't want to divide all the muscles. You can put a stitch, a chemical or what we call a cutting seton suture. Seton is a nothing but a suture. Usually it is nowadays done also by us. But those days it is done by various Ayurvedic practice or Siddha practitioners. Okay, there are two types of seton suturing. One which has a chemical thing. When you really tighten it, it cuts through the muscles gradually over a period of many weeks. That is called a cutting seton. The other one we apply in a case of Crohn's disease with the multiple fistula is called a draining seton. Because the purpose of the draining seton is as long as this uh, is there as a wick, the patient will not have a recurrent abscess formation. So seton helps us to avoid any abscess formation. Cutting seton also helps to some large extent healing of the fistula. But nowadays there are more Advanced therapies are available, like shown here. We can inject some fibrin glue into the external opening after curatage the whole track. Or we use something like a fistula plug or a video assisted examination and excision or the coring of the fistula track called the waft therapy, fistuloscopy. It is something like an endoscopy. And the more recent procedure is called a lift procedure. What is lift procedure? You go in the intersphincteric plane like this and identify the track. This is the internal opening, external opening. This is the fistulous track. You just disconnect the track in the intersphincteric plane and you remove this internal opening or suture it. So by this way, you are not excising the whole thing, making a big wound. You are just making a small wound. So it is a minimally invasive procedure. That is ligation of the intersphincteric fistula tract. So these are the various things available. We can quickly finish the rest of the things like proctitis. Proctitis is nothing but one of the presentation of ulcerative colitis or Crohn's patient. As you already, we have had a case of inflammatory bowel disease presenting with what we call a bloody diarrhea. When you have a patient with a bloody diarrhea like this, okay, and a tenismus, okay, they'll have all these ulcerations like this and hyperemia. So you, in addition to inspection of the anal region, rectal examination, proctoscopy, the diagnosis of proctitis can be established by using a colonoscopy and biopsy. The treatment, as you know, in addition to ASA, you have to give like mesalacin, mesalacin, I mean, okay, steroid also, either rectally as an enema or orally or intravenous, depending upon the severity, extent of the inflammatory bowel disease. I think we you need to go back and read everything in the IBD. Next, of course, is Less common condition, but whenever you have an indurated ulcer in the anal margin, very painful, and when you feel it looks and feels a bit suspicious of cancer, especially in elderly people, always you do a, a wedge biopsy to exclude anal cancer. Even anal cancer could be either squamous cell carcinoma or squamo adenocarcinoma or even amelanotic melanoma. So the biopsy is must. The one thing which will alert you is by induration of the ulcer. Okay. And the rest of the investigation as and when required you to. Pylonidal sepsis. That is not an exam case. But sometimes you have to be aware of. Because some of us may be also suffering from Especially when you are a hairy individual like this particular person. This area, especially in the natal cleft, the hairs can get in. And all this hair with the infection in this region will go for a recurrent infection in the natal cleft called pylonidal abscess. They usually present as a tender swelling, recurrent infection, discharging multiple sinuses. Sinuses are 
blind ending places unlike the pistol which are communicating places i mean tracks okay so this is common those days this during the second world war people traveling long distances in the jeep okay with the sweating and other things then they go the forest so that's why it is famously known as jeep bottom so this is one of the extreme case of philonidal sinus with the multiple sinus opening abscess in this region these are all the things you will be able to remove and the treatment either you can incise and drain the pus alone or excise the whole thing like this okay don't make an incision right in the middle because the main thing is the natal gluteal fold has to be eliminated by an operation called a caridakis procedure sometimes nowadays i normally do a procedure called a limburg flap so here you can see a rhomboid flap taking all the pilonoidal sinus opening excising the whole thing skin like this then use this area like a skin normal skin neighboring skin like a transposition flap okay so it will go and cover so it is a very very successful operation we have done in hundreds of cases and a very gratifying result the next condition is a peri anal or pain in the bottom not necessarily should be anal origin it could be urological also like here patient with a severe prostatic infection they can have pain in the perineum then difficulty with the maturation especially in the elderly people prostatitis cause for perineal pain not anal pain perineal because you know when you do a rectal examination you can feel the prostate in the anteriorly isn't it so there when you feel the prostate it will be very tender anteriorly okay the second condition is urethral stricture with the infection the perineal urethra as you can see here is between the anus and the scrotum so that also can discharge urine and rarely you will have very severe infection of the scrotal skin extending out to the perianal region that is called the furnius gangrene furnius gangrene is a very very important anaerobic and anaerobic infection okay where you can see it is nothing but a necrotizing fasciitis involving the skin and also dorsal muscle region it will extend testis usually is spared but you should be very ruthless doing a wide debridement good antibiotic repeated dressing in order to salvage this patient otherwise they'll go for a very extensive necrosis of the perineal region this is very rare condition that is called hydradenitis suppurativa this is because of the type of the sweat gland in this region like in sometimes you have it in the axilla some people will have groin some people will have everywhere like this a recurrent infection it is one of the differential diagnosis for multiple fistula in the anus okay the last case very frustrating sometimes for the patient is what we call a pain deep inside the rectum they'll say sir i always have severe spasm or stabbing pain in the rectum and urge to defecate not able to sleep or concentrate like that that is called a proctologia fuga when you inspect do a rectal examination proctoscopy everything may be normal but usually these people will have a very typical history of tenismus as if there is a urge to defecate and when they go to the toilet they will not have the satisfaction of having emptied the toilet completely there is sense of incomplete empty you have to do all the investigation like mentioned here because this is a patient who will be going from doctor to doctor so you may have to repeat the colonoscopy endorectal ultrasound anal manometry and as a patient is squatting defecating substance you take a cine radiology that is called a defecography because the defecography will tell you the anorectal angle various muscles there are various parameters we consider in order to identify the actual problem whether it is a descending perineum exactly what is the cause so it is a by a speciality by itself but what i am trying to tell you is whenever you have a patient who describes a pain in the region of rectum you are not able to identify the re region reason then consider proctology of fugai 
and advise the patient to undergo a specialist consultation where she'll undergo anal manometry defecography in order to find out the reason. Till the time, you can symptomatically treat the patient by SIDS bath, diltism ointment, or oral diazepam just to calm her down, things like that, okay? Think that gives you an overview on the various common conditions like uh, starting from the commonest perianal painful condition like fissure, the commonest rectal bleeding condition like bleeding piles. We know all now what all the dis diseases one can have, especially when you are going to become a junior doctor or even a general practitioner. These 10 patients will come to you and if you are able to treat them comfortably, confidently, they'll be very, very grateful to you. Okay. So with that, I thank you all of you for having come on this Sunday. And I recommend you to come the next Sunday and the Sunday after to successfully complete the 30 module. So 29th module will have a 50 question MCQ. Till the time, bye-bye. Stay safe. Jai Hind.